Amen. All right. Well, thanks for being here. Again, you guys are the real MVPs. You're the heroes uh, because we don't have school tomorrow. Make some noise. We don't have school tomorrow. Whew. And uh, normally that means that uh, the edge is a little lighter. It's a little lesser attended when we don't have school the next day. It's just kind of generally how it works. And so you're the really spiritual ones. Um, so thank you uh, for being here. Last week, we talked about this word right here, singleness singleness. And I think it's important if you're in middle school, if you're in high school, if you're in college, if you're an adult in the room, if you're a leader in the room, maybe if you're uh, be a single parent in the room, uh, I think God wants to use this season of your life. Uh, I think God wants you to step into who you're called to be. Uh, and I think that he has big things planned for this season, whether it lasts a really long time or whether a boyfriend or a girlfriend is just around the corner. I think that God wants to use it to make a, a massive difference in the world around you. And so we gave you some just, I don't know, some practical tidbits of advice to help you maximize singleness because we said this, in order to maximize love, sex, and dating, you need to maximize singleness first. Really, it's building a foundation. It's not just, it's not necessarily a means to an end, but at the same time, a lot of you guys are going to date. A lot of you are going to date. Therefore, it's, it's building a foundation that's either going to be strong enough to hold your love, sex, and dating life up, or it's going to be weak and it's all going to come crumbling down. And so today we're going to talk about a word that's actually in the title of the series. Uh, and, it, and we're going to talk about dating. We're going to talk about dating. Uh, and next week we're having a panel discussion up here with some leaders. And then the following week after that, we're having a dude's night and a ladies night. Okay. And so what that's going to look like, I'm excited. We're going to worship together. Everyone's going to worship together. Dudes are going to go across the hall. We're going to have a conversation about dude stuff. And then girls are going to stay over here and be led um, by a few awesome ladies. And so we're excited for the rest of the series, but let's not miss the moment. Tonight, we're talking about dating. And I have a confession. I'm not huge on middle school and high school dating, okay? I'm not super enthusiastic about middle school or high school dating. And I'm not saying that it's wrong or sinful to date when you're in high school or middle school, but I do think it leads to temptations and oftentimes it leads to sin in your life. Um, so I guess I would just say it this way. You don't have to date. You don't have to date. You, you don't have to. The pressure's off. Middle schooler, you don't have to date. High schooler, you don't have to date. Leader, you don't have to have a boyfriend or girlfriend right now. It's okay. You, you don't have to. To which all of the middle schoolers and high schoolers, if you know me at all, would say, easy for you to say. Easy for you to say again, right? Like you're married and you dated all throughout high school. To which I would say, busted yet again, two weeks in a row. You guys got me. In fact, I have some pictures of me and, uh, and my high school girlfriend. Um, that's, that's, that's Abby. Yeah, we can keep going. This is, this is us in high school. These are funny. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's big stuff. Um, that's big stuff. We can keep going. Yes, that's Halloween, freshman year of high school. That's the big stuff bus, holding hands on the big stuff bus. Um, what else do we have? I think we have a few more. Yes, look at, find you a girl that, 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 that looks at you the way that Abby looked at me. Um, who else do we have? Yes, that's the last one, I think. So those are some pictures of like, we were 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 years old. And it's really funny. In fact, I look back at those pictures for the first time in a really long time on Thursday, and I was like laughing out loud in the Starbucks that I was working at. But, but, like I would say they're cute pictures. I do. I think they're kind of fun to look at. But some of the stories behind those pictures, right, it is actually the reason why I would tell you I'm not huge on middle school and high school dating. It's true. I think if you would ask me, I think if you would ask Abby, hey, would you do it differently? I think both of us would say we would probably wait to date until we we're like 21 years old, right? And we, we were just young. We were young. God, God, I know you don't want to hear it, but you're young. You're, you're pretty young. And dating's emotional. And dating's confusing. And dating brings a whole lot of pressure into your world. And honestly, for me at least, I just don't think I was old enough to handle it. I don't think I was emotionally mature enough to handle it. I don't think I was spiritually mature enough to handle it. And so again, you don't have to date, but you don't have to date. But what fun would it be if I got up here and just closed down with that, right? 
Like, to which all the parents say, that would be really fun. That would be really, really good. To which all of the students say, that would be no fun at all. And I don't think it wouldn't just be, like, I don't think it would just be no fun. I think it would be naive. I think it would be naive. I think it would be fairly ignorant because here's the reality. Again, some of you are going to date. Some of you are going to date. It's true. I think you can make a case that a lot of you are going to date. By the end of your high school careers, a lot of you are going to date at one point or another. You don't have to, <laughs> but a lot of you will. And if you will, if you're not opposed to dating middle school, high school, I don't know what your parents say. You need to respect them on that. It, even if you're like, I'm going to date once I get in college, this is such an important conversation. It's such an important conversation. So we're going to give you some practical pieces of advice on dating. Are you ready? Yes, you are. Okay, here we go. You got to provide clarity. You got to provide clarity. And here's what I mean by that, dude. Okay, she's either your girl or she's not. Okay, she's either your girl or she's not. Some of you, you guys just earn points because you tap your girl. You're like, you're my girl, right? Like, I caught you, actually. You know who I'm talking about, actually. I literally just saw you do that. And it was really sweet. Um, next one. Okay, he's either your man or he's not, okay? There, there's, there's, there's no in between, okay? And I wasn't, hear me on this. You need to respect the girl that you like enough, okay? You need to respect the guy that you like enough to be clear with where you guys stand, okay? You just need to be clear. You shouldn't leave the other person guessing. It's disrespectful. It's just not nice, okay? And I was really bad at this in high school, Okay, I was really, really bad. At times they'd be like, so what's going on with you and whoever? And I'd be like, I don't know. I don't really know. You know, and, and when I wasn't clear in regards to what was going on in my dating world or whatever, it hurt the people that I cared about. It, it hurt them. It did. And, and I got a little better as, as I got older. When I was 20 years old, I had a pretty serious girlfriend. Okay, and I remember we had never gone on a date or anything, and so I made a phone call. I went out to my front yard, got on the phone, and I said, hey, um, I'm going to be in your city in a few weeks. Would you like to get coffee with me? And I didn't drink coffee, but I was like, sounds like a good thing, you know? And she said, sure, yeah, and sounds good. So we hung up, went to get coffee, talked talk for a long time. I said, I like you. I had fun. Uh, can we keep communicating. I want to let you know that I'm going to pursue a relationship with you if you'll allow it. And she said, yes, yeah, sounds great. A few weeks later, we're in a dating relationship. A few months later, a few months later, I realized that we weren't going to get married. And it was long distance, didn't really like it. I was like, we, we aren't going to get married. And so I called her and I said, I don't think we're going to get married. So I want to break up. And she's like, okay, all right. And didn't like, wasn't the best conversation in the world, but she always knew where I stood. For all those months, from, from the beginning to the end, if you would have asked her, she would have always known. Like, it wouldn't have been any of this. I don't know. I don't know. We're just seeing what happens. We're kind of talking. We're Snapchatting. We're hanging out. That's my least favorite one. We all know what that one means, right? We're hanging out. I hate that one, right? But you need to be clear. You... You need, to be, you need to be clear. It's just not fair. Guys, middle school and high school is confusing enough. It is. Middle school and high school is emotional enough and, and, and it's nerve-wracking enough. There are all these things going on in your mind. There are enough thoughts racing around. You don't need to add, add, add that to your mind of thinking, does this person like me? Does he not like me? Are we dating? Where, where are we at? Okay? So here's the deal. Ladies. If, if the guy is like, I think he likes me, but, but it's just not clear, you know, but like you, you're kind of exclusive. You're like, no, he's my dude. But for, for him, he hasn't been clear. He hasn't really defined anything. You don't know where he stands. Just end it. End it. Break it off. Guys, if she's not being clear, just end it. Break it off. It's not worth it. Demand clarity. Demand clarity. You deserve it. You deserve it. In fact, this is a really good practical way. This is a really good practical way for you to do what the proverb writer says, what Solomon says, you need to guard your heart. For everything you do flows from it. You need to guard your heart. You need to guard your mind. You need to guard your life. And if they aren't in, then just be done with it. You don't need to mess around with that. And here's kind of a real practical thing, okay? I think this is 
a, a good example again. I don't, you guys live in a different world than I lived in, middle school and high school with your phones and stuff. But let's say at night, okay? And I don't, again, I don't really know how this works. But let's say you're, 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 you're a girl and you're talking with a guy, okay? And you're talking like every day. And it seems like you're flirting and it seems like he's into you and you start to develop feelings for him. You're like, I like him. You're in your heart, in your mind, you're like, I like this person. I'm developing feelings for this person. Just ask them where they stand. Ask them if they feel the same way. Or let's say you're Snapchatting someone or you're talking to someone a bunch and you're having a really good time and you know that that person likes you but you don't like them back. Don't lead them on. Don't keep doing what you're doing. It's just not fair, okay? Make sure you're wise with that whole thing, okay? And then here's something that I think is important for us. If you're, if you're dating, hear, hear this. If you're not dating, hear this. If you know that you're gonna break up with someone down the road, there's never a better time to break up with someone than right now. That was, a, that was a problem for me in high school. Breakups suck, it's just the reality, excuse my language, but they aren't fun. They're, they're not fun, and so I knew that at times, like I don't really, I'm not feeling it anymore. I was, I was so dysfunctional in high school, whatever, but I was like, I, we're gonna break up, okay? But oftentimes I would push it off because I didn't wanna hurt the other person's feelings, right? There was one time, I was a junior, okay? Just sharing stories here. It's a good therapy session. And I was going to be a junior. I was at Big Stuff Camp. I was going to be a junior in high school. And there was this freshman girl that I thought was really cute. I started kind of talking to her. Okay. That was the first problem, kind of talking. Just talked about that. And so we were kind of talking. We went on a couple dates. And it was a couple months into the school year. And, and I realized she's a freshman. I'm a junior. She's great, whatever. But she has a different friend group. I just am not gonna, I'm just not going to keep going with this. But I didn't want to hurt her feelings because she was nice. She was sweet. I was like, I'm not, I don't want to. So I just kind of stopped texting. Just kind of stopped calling. She stopped texting. She stopped calling. A couple weeks later, I get a message on Facebook saying, hey, what's going on? Are you going to tell me what's going on? And again, I was trying to be nice. I didn't want to hurt her, but in the process, I hurt her even more. I let her on. She didn't know what was going on. And so again, if you know that this isn't going anywhere, practically, okay? And I would make a case, if you know that you're not going to get married to this person, that's a topic for next week, okay? But if you know that you're not going to marry this person, which seems weird, telling middle schoolers, but... If you know that it's not going anywhere, if you know that it's not going to last, just break it off. Why delay the inevitable? If you keep going, someone's just going to get more and more hurt, okay? So there's never a better time to break up with someone than right now, okay? Again, recap. Just provide clarity. Just, just be clear. Next, prioritize clarity. Prioritize clarity. You need to, you need to try and see with a, a, a kind of a clear lens as to who this person is. I told you last week that I coach seventh grade basketball and I keep like eight, nine or 10 guys, 35 dudes try out. Do you know what the most important aspect of that tryout is? My eyes, my eyes. I need to be paying attention. It's a, it's a process of evaluating what's in front of me because the, the quality of our season rests on who I pick. And if I realize they don't have what it takes to, to play with us, then I just write down cut, cut, and we cut them. And I know that sounds harsh, but it's just part of the process. And I think that is a good picture as to what dating is. The, maybe the most important aspect of your dating life is your eyes. You need, to, you need to fight to see this person clearly. You need to prioritize clarity. And if you realize that they don't have what it takes to be your boyfriend or girlfriend or your future spouse, end it. Say, it's, we're done. Cut it off. It's not worth it. And, and I know when we talk about clarity, this question always gets brought up. And we'll probably talk about this some next week, maybe, if you, I think a couple of people asked in the Instagram. But the question gets brought up, should I think they're hot? Seriously. Like, you guys ask that. When we talk about standards, when we talk about clarity, when we talk about who, we're, who we shouldn't date, you're like, should I think they're attractive? Should I think they're cute? To which I would say... Probably, I guess, right? I mean, practically speaking, if you're, if you're gonna date them with marriage in mind, you should, yeah, I mean, you should probably be attracted to them. And I don't think that's necessarily just physical. And sometimes that happens over time, but that happens pretty organically and it doesn't really take, take long to figure it out. You're either attracted to them or you're not. You know what's a whole lot more important, to, a whole lot more important to be clear on? It's this, you need to be clear on their character. You need to know who they are. 
You need to know that person. Who, who are they when no one's watching? That's a good question to ask yourself. Who are they when no one's watching? Are, are they the same person in private as they are in public? How do they treat people? How do they treat their parents? What do they do in their free time? We talked about this last week. Do they, do they watch pornography? This is stuff to consider. This is stuff to think about. What's their character? Who, who are they? Who are they really? We need, to, we need to look at this stuff. We need to think about this stuff. The next thing is, is you need to be clear on their faith. You need to be clear on their faith. And if you're not, if you're not a Jesus follower, if you don't want to follow Jesus, then maybe this isn't as important f- for you. But if you claim to be a Jesus follower, Scripture makes it really clear, you, you just can't date someone who, who's not a Jesus follower. It's, it's honestly that simple. And I know that some of us are like, that sounds really harsh. That seems pretty harsh, but really I actually think it's kind and I think it's loving to both parties involved. I do, and I'm gonna explain that here in a few moments. In fact, I would just say that it's common sense. I do. You, you're gonna be impacted, whether you're in middle school, high school, college, whatever age, you're gonna be impacted by who you date more than anyone else in the world. It's true. You're gonna talk with them the most, you're gonna think about them the most, you're gonna be impacted by them the most. Paul says, don't be yoked together with someone who doesn't believe like you believe. And essentially what you do when you're dating, when you say, I'm gonna date you, I'm gonna talk to you all the time, I'm gonna think about you all the time, we're gonna Snapchat all the time, you're connecting your life to them. You're connecting your life to them. And let's say that someone came up here and literally we were connected. We were connected. And let's say I was a Jesus follower. I was a Jesus follower. And let's say following Jesus, that road, that path was that way. But the person I was dating wasn't a Jesus follower. And that path was that way. We're going in two totally opposite directions. And if I'm not super strong-willed, you're impacted by somebody. Oftentimes, okay, I'm trying to go this way, but this person's dragging me in a direction that I'm not wanting to go. This is what happens when we connect our lives to someone. And then if I'm really strong and if I'm really good, and again, they don't want to follow Jesus, maybe, just maybe, I can drag them along. Either way, I'm being held back. Either way, I'm being held back. And so the question that we need to ask is this, what's the pace that they're running on? Are they on pace with you in their relationship with God? It doesn't mean that they need to to be the most spiritually mature person in the world. It doesn't need to be, it doesn't mean that they need to be a Christian for a super, super, super long time. It's that, are they on the same path? Are they, are they, are they going on the same pace? Because if not, it's going to be really, really, really frustrating. I remember, again, in, in eighth grade, it was my first ever crush, okay? And I liked her a lot, but she was dating my best friend. It was torture. And, and it was going into junior year, high school was the summer, and we started, like, <laughs> I'm using all the terms I'm telling you not to use. Um, we started kind of dating, and I uh, wasn't clear, okay? I wasn't good on the whole clarity thing. And, uh, but we were headed in that direction. And I, I thought she was cool. I thought she was great. I, I, whatever. She was, I was trying to follow Jesus at this point in my life. I wasn't into the wild stuff. I didn't, I didn't want to hook up with her. I didn't want to do any of that stuff. And she was pretty morally, you know, I would say kind of equal to me at this point in my life. She didn't go out and get hammered. She wasn't doing that stuff. But there was one night, me and my cousin Matt were sitting on the deck and we were eating ice pops, I think, or pop ice or whatever those popsicles are. So good. Love the blue ones. And we were eating the popsicles on the deck. And I hear, Caitlin lived just right across the telegraph from us. It was like half a mile. And I hear someone in my common ground going, Josh, Josh, Josh. I'm like, who is that? Matt, who is that? And then I keep hearing it, Josh, Josh. I'm like, is that Caitlin? And then I look, I'm like, Caitlin? And she comes up. And she had, she had an older brother and she had been drinking, okay? And that was a pretty big red flag for me, okay? Because I wasn't about that life, okay? But that was a pretty big, big red flag. And so she comes up on the deck and she had had a few drinks in her system and she, she, was, she was being so loud. I mean, so loud. My parents are right there, okay? I'm like, what are you doing? And so she's like, Josh, she's laughing. She's laughing so loud. And she's like, give me a popsicle. 
give me a popsicle. I'm like, okay, I'll get you a popsicle. Relax. Goodness gracious, be quiet. And so I go in, I get a popsicle, and then we sit down on our basketball court and we have a conversation. And she had been to church a couple times, but she never talked about it a whole lot. And this was really important to me. And, and she, she said, it just kind of came out. Okay, she was being honest, I guess. And she said, I'm an atheist. She just said it. I don't believe what you believe. She just came out and said it. We're sitting down across from each other. And in that moment, I just said, I don't think it's going to work. I think we're going to just have to maybe stop doing this. Um, I think we're going to have to stop dating. And she's like, yeah, I agree. I agree. I walked her home, made sure she got home safe, gave her a hug and said, all right, see you later. We were just, we're friends afterwards. There's no regrets. We didn't do anything stupid. It's all good. And again, guys, that just makes sense. I mean, the most important thing in my life at that point was God. It was God. At least I was trying to have it be God. How frustrating it, would it be for her to have me, to have her boyfriend, the most important thing in my life be something that she, think is, she thinks is fake? That would be so frustrating, not just for me, but for her as well. And she understood that. That just doesn't Makes sense, okay? And so you need to be clear on where they're at in their relationship with Jesus if you're even thinking about following Jesus. They're gonna impact you more than anyone else in your world. Next, you need to be clear on their sexual boundaries, okay? You need to be clear on their sexual boundaries. And here's the question that goes along with that. How committed are they to honoring God? Okay, like how committed are they to honoring God with their bodies and with your body? How, how, how committed are they to respecting you? How, how committed are they? Because it's easy to just be like, oh, we aren't gonna have sex. And we're gonna go there here for a few moments. So just bear down, okay? Um, we're, it's easy for us to say, I'm just not gonna go there. Okay, we're just not gonna do it. It's a whole nother thing to say, I'm gonna get accountability. I'm gonna honor you. I'm gonna respect you. I'm not even gonna go close I'm going to flee from sexual morality. I'm going to try and stay far away from it. I'm not going to go down in the basement alone with you. I'm not going to do it. How serious are they? How committed are they to actually honoring God with their sexuality? What, right? And, and here's what question, you guys always ask this question, and I understand it. If it's asked in the right spirit, it's not a horrible question. And it says, what should the boundaries be? What should the boundaries be? But if it's asked in the wrong spirit, it's a horrible question because in the wrong spirit, essentially the question is, how close can I get to sinning without actually sinning? How close can I get to the line, right? Like how close can I get to the line and still be good? God's not after your begrudging submission. Like, oh yeah, I can't do that, but we're gonna do this. No, he wants your heart. He wants you to honor him with your body. And God says, Okay, we're, God says from the very beginning in Genesis, Genesis, you see it in the, in the creation account, and you see it, I believe, all, woven all throughout the narrative of scripture. God's standard for sex, God's design for sex is man and woman in the context of marriage. That's God's design for sex. It's confined to a man and a woman in the context of a marriage. We believe that. And so some of you are like, okay, I'm dating. I'm I'm dating, I get it. So like in the meantime, when I'm in middle school or high school, what can we do? What can we do? What should the boundaries be, right? Like how far can we go? Can we, can we get handsy? <laughs> right? Can, can we? Can we, can we have... Can we have makeout sessions? Can we kiss with our tongues? Right? Can, can we do this? Can we do that? I mean, can, can, I, can, I send, can I send pictures? Can we sext? What, can we do that stuff? Because it's not, se it's not really sex. It's not, like a, it's, not like we're, it's not like we're doing the real thing. It's not like we're going all the way. How far can I go? What can we do? right? That's the question. Maybe, just maybe you're asking. And guys, culture has made it totally normal. Culture has normalized sex so much. Culture has cheapened sex so much and sexuality so much where it's just like, it's no big deal. Just experiment while you're young. Have fun. 
Get it out of your system. There's no such thing, by the way. It just gets driven deeper down into your system. Have fun, experiment. Goodness gracious, get on Netflix and you see shows that are titled sexuality and it's garbage. And it's normalizing it and it's cheapening it. And it's saying, do whatever you want to do whenever you want to do it. And for some of us, because sin is fun, and because sexual sin is fun and it feels good, for some of us, we just buy into it. I'm gonna watch the porn, I'm gonna look at the stuff, I'm gonna hook up with my girlfriend or my, bro- or my boyfriend or anyone who will hook up with me, I'm gonna send the pictures, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that, because we've bought into a lie. We've bought in to the idea that sex is just physical. We've bought into the lie that sex isn't a big deal. And it is. In fact, it's such a big deal. Jesus raises the standard so much. Again, we see at the very beginning, sex is confined for a man and the woman in, in the context of marriage. And then look at what Jesus says in the Sermon on the Mount. He says, you've heard it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his own heart. What he says here, if, if you have a strong sexual desire and it, and it lingers there and you think on it, if you have a strong sexual desire that's lingering for the opposite sex, it's pretty much like you're committing adultery in your own heart. It's sexual sin, it's wrong, and God frowns upon it. And if that's the case, <laughs> if, if that's the case, if God says, hey, I don't want you to have a strong sexual desire, you know, again, outside of the context of marriage, I don't want you to think on that. I don't want you to look at a woman lustfully. I don't want you to look at the opposite sex lustfully. If that's the case, then I would say most everything is off limits, right? Guys, sending the pictures, receiving the pictures is going to bring about a strong sexual desire, okay? Experimenting, getting handsy, kissing, going down in the basement and having makeout sessions, okay? Unless you're not human, Okay, that's going to bring about a strong sexual desire. So what can you do? Well, anything that doesn't cause you to lust, which really isn't a whole lot. I think that's the standard. And some of you are like, that's really weird. Some of you are like, I, I don't like that. Some of you are like, that's so boring. That is so boring. Are you serious? We, we, can't, we can't have a strong sexual desire. But guys, it's countercultural. I get it. God's teaching is countercultural, but God's standard on sex is for your good. Goodness gracious, we as human beings are funny. We're like, well, this is boring. God, you're wrong. And yet he created it. He created sex. He says sex in the context of what it was created to be is beautiful. It's a gift. It's amazing. And it's a gift worth waiting for. So you need to be really, really clear. You need to be really, really clear on, on the, the other person's standards when it comes to sex, okay? And here's another reason why. Sex clouds your clarity in dating, okay? We just talked about how you need to prioritize clarity, okay? If you want your clarity to be blurred, just start messing around. I mean, goodness gracious, it blurs your clarity so much. It clouds your judgment so much to the point where a lot of people could be like, that person's horrible for you. Why are you, you guys don't even get along. And, and you're like, no, they're so great. And the reason is, is because you've, you've, you've committed, you've, You've given them part of your soul, essentially. You've, you've mingled your soul. You've given something to them that, that, that you can't get back and it hurts and it's painful. And you're like, I, it's just, it, guys, sex outside of marriage brings shame. It does. It does. I, I have a friend who, I'm going off script a whole lot tonight. This is going to be probably too long. But th- there's a friend who, who used to love God and really just says that, she's an atheist now and she had this big old strand about how talking about purity is so harmful 
talking about, you know, like saving sex until marriage is so harmful and it brings shame and this and that. And I'm like, first off, we talk about grace here, okay? And, and how grace covers shame and all these different things. We talked about it last week. We're gonna talk about it again tonight. We've been singing about it, but it's not what the church says. It's just the act itself. It's, it's, it's something outside of marriage that it just brings shame. Paul says that sexual sin is different than any other sin in your life because you're committing it against your own body. You're committing it against your own heart and your own soul. It, it, it brings about shame. It does. Guys, some of you have felt it. Some of you might just feel it now. It's, it's heavy. It's heavy. It's, it's not just skin on skin. It's not just flesh on flesh. It is, it is deeper than that. It, it, it gets down to the core of who you are to the point where, guys, sex makes breakups nearly impossible and very hard to move on from. I mean, so hard. So hard. And I get it. I get it. I've experienced it. It, it brings about so much pain. It brings about so much regret. You've, 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 you've given them something that you're not gonna get back. You've been intimate with someone. You've, again, you've kind of, there's been a mingling of your souls with somebody. And then it's like, now we gotta cut it off. Like it's, it's challenging, it's difficult. And some of you are like, well, dang it, I've blown it. I've blown it. I'm in middle school, I'm in high school, I'm in college, I'm an adult and I've blown it. Never, ever forget that the message of Jesus shouts to you, you can start over. You can start over tonight. What a beautiful moment this moment could be where you say from this day forward, from this moment on, I am gonna commit to honoring God with my body. It's beautiful. What a beautiful commitment that would be. There are countless second chances that have been given to you at the cross. There are. And I believe that with everything that I have. So here are, here are a, a, uh, here are a few pieces of advice for your dating, and then we're going to get out of here. Okay. The first is this, be private and public. Okay, so if you're going to date, if, and if you want to actually commit to honoring God with your body and sex and all these different things, you need to be private and public. And what I mean by that is, is you need to get to know that some of you are like, well, I, we just need to have alone time. You can have alone time at a park. You can have alone time at a restaurant. You can, you can sit across from them, get to know them. You can talk with them. You need to be private and public. If you're private and private, some, maybe some some things might take place, okay? Essentially what we're saying is, is you need to eliminate the moment that leads to the moment. And if you've, if you've messed around sexually and if you've gone too far and if you've done this, you know what moment I'm talking about. There's a moment where you're like, there's no going back now, right? The desire is there, it's strong, especially if you've already kind of committed the act and you go back to the place that you've already been and by the time you're in the basement alone with your girlfriend or your boyfriend, to be honest with you, it's just too late. So, so, so don't go in the basement by yourselves. Don't go up in your bedroom. Don't, don't do that stuff. You, you need to be private and public. And then this is really important. Pursue Jesus separately. Pursue Jesus separately. Okay? If you're dating, if you're dating right here, Make friends with people of your own gender. Make friends in your small group. Make friends outside of just your boyfriend or your girlfriend. Okay, decide to, decide to follow Jesus separately because here's what we see all the time. You break up, you break up. And maybe one of the reasons that you're you know, following Jesus is just because of your girlfriend. And you're like, it's just what we do together. Well, when you break up, Oftentimes the relationship with Jesus goes with it. You're like, I'm done going to church, done reading my Bible, done doing this, done doing that. You need to pursue Jesus separately. You do. So important. And essentially, this is, this is what you have the opportunity to do. This is what opportunity you have in front of you as a middle schooler, as a high schooler, as really anyone in the room. 
you have an opportunity to paint a picture. You do. You have an opportunity to paint a picture to the world that God is good and that God's design and that God's way and that God's standards and that God's teachings are best. You, you have an opportunity to paint a picture to the world that you love God, that you trust God, that you're in a relationship with Jesus and that he's enough and that, and that everyone looking at the picture, they can realize that, wow, that's different. That's different. There's something different about that relationship. There's something different about that person. It seems holy. It seems better because following Jesus is always better. And then hear me on this, okay? <sighs> Girls in the room, some of you are like, if I follow what you're telling me to follow, no dude is ever going to give me attention. Like, if, if I don't send the picture... If, if I don't flirt, if I don't, if I don't date these guys, if I don't go too far, whatever, sexually, no one's ever going to pay attention. He, you might not see it now, but you don't want those guys to pay attention to you anyways. You just don't. You, you deserve better than that. You, you do. Guys, guys, maybe you're feeling the same thing. It, it's just, that's not attractive. That's weird. Like, like, if I don't dive into this type of stuff, girls are going to think I'm weird. No, no, they won't. I'm just going to say that's a lie. And, and again, the girls that do think it's weird, you don't want to attract them, but I've seen it. I experienced it in high school. Like, girls think that's cool. It's different. It's holy. People are attracted to that. And so honor God. Honor God. And even if they aren't, even if they aren't attracted to it, it's always worth it. It's a beautiful act of worship saying, God, I'm going to trust you in this season in regards to love, sex, and dating. Sound good? Sound good? Hopefully that helped um, a little bit. Um, I'm going to pray, and then we're actually going to sing a worship song um, that I think is maybe the greatest song in the world. Uh, Father, we thank you for... Um, we thank you just for wisdom. We thank you for um, resources and for books and for writings and for adults. Um, people have been around uh, for a while um, that we can learn from. And uh, Father, I thank you for those people in my life. I thank you for the impact that those teachings have had on my life. And God, I pray that, um, that tonight's teachings and last week's teachings don't fall on deaf ears. Um, I pray that you soften our hearts on this topic. I pray that you open our eyes to just the deeper reality that is at play here. And God, I pray that we commit to honoring you in regards to our dating life. I pray that we can respect people enough to be clear. God, I pray that we respect ourselves enough to demand clarity. And God, I pray I pray, I pray, I pray that we can be honest with ourselves about who the person is that we maybe just maybe we're interested in. I pray that you give us eyes to see who they are. Are they someone that's worth dating? Are they someone that's going to bring me closer to Jesus or farther away from them? God, I pray that you help us trust you when it comes to your design for sex, for for the different conversations that maybe go on in schools in regards to hooking up and, and sending pictures and messing around and all these different things. Help us trust that the teachings that are contrary to what you teach, it's, it's garbage and it leads to destruction. God, I know that it's hard to see that now. I know that the temptations loom, but Father, you promise a way out. And God, I pray that we tap into that. I pray that we ask for help. I pray that you help us actually live the lives that were created to live in regards to this topic. And God, I pray, I pray, I pray that all of it flows from a beautiful relationship with Jesus Christ. And it's in his name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's stand up and let's sing the song.